What's the fastest way to get back into pianistic shape after a long break from the instrument? Let's say you haven't played the piano in a while or been on vacation. Whatever is the reason, you're feeling rusty, you need to restart, and you don't know how. You might not know what to do, which exercises to practice, and how to go about it. It could be so overwhelming that you end up procrastinating which only compounds the problem. Luckily, there is a strategy and we will examine it today. Our guiding light will be Franz Liszt, the father of the piano who had a lot of experience getting back to tip-top piano shape after long travels away from the piano. How did he do it and how can we learn from him? Stay tuned. I'm Margaret Wasik, the founder of the Golden Tone Technique Method. The Golden Tone Technique is an approach to the piano that will give you a natural, artistic, pain-free, and absolutely expressive technique using the forgotten art of tone production. Tone production was the primary way that the great masters from the 19th century and beyond achieve their greatest virtuosity. I have spent 25 years researching and bringing this now to a whole new generation of pianists. Join the hundreds of students from around the world that have transformed their playing using the 19th century secrets of tone production to develop their technique. You can watch the free 60 minute training right below. So in the year 2000, I was on my honeymoon in Budapest, Hungary, and I could not wait to visit the Liszt Museum. I've always been absolutely fascinated with not only the music of Franz Liszt, but the person that he was. And so I spent three whole days in that museum going through all of his mementos, looking at the letters he wrote, looking at the pianos he played, and I was struck by one thing. In the room that contained the objects that Liszt kept close to him when he traveled on tour, one of the items happened to be a dummy keyboard. Franz Liszt was like the Beatles of his day. When he went on tour, crowds of 3,000 people would turn out for him. It was known as Listomania. People would go wild, kind of grabbing at his clothes, tearing at anything they could get of his, including collecting his cigar butts and broken strings that he left behind. But he really made the modern recital the thing that we know today. Some of the things that he innovated was for instance, the way that the piano faced with the lid facing the audience. Another thing that he developed was the idea that a pianist can play alone on stage for the entire duration of the concert. It was a form that he called a soliloquy, which is in a way merging of his artistry his poetic nature and his spirituality that he poured into a program people would describe as having a moment of ecstasy when he played. Another thing that Liszt innovated was the idea of the artist entering from the wings to the piano. Very special ritual because before that recitals were often just variety of different instrumentalists sharing the same program. Liszt truly covered all of Europe on his tours. He would start at Glasgow for one and travel 2300 miles to Constantinople all in a mail coach which consisted basically of a horse and buggy. He would also at one point go from Gibraltar all the way to St. Petersburg, Russia. So truly he spent so much time on these uh, mail coaches and would have to arrive at the destination of his concert fully prepared to play a dazzling concert 
for audiences of 3,000. Now, how did he do that? Especially since he would be confined to that male coach for days, if not weeks on end. He used that dummy keyboard to go over passages, to figure out fingerings, to rehearse the music mentally, and to just make sure that his fingers stayed alert. Another thing he left behind for us were finger exercises that he devised and used to get into pianistic shape as quickly as possible. These exercises, specifically the ones that I'm going to show you in this video, have been my tried and true exercises to quickly get fingers back into shape. But first we have to define what does it mean to get back into pianistic shape? There are a few criteria. First, it means that the fingers have to have independence and we must have control over them. Usually after a long break, there's a feeling of real flaccidness in the fingers. It could be very disconcerting. So to get them to feel independent and alert again is the first thing we need to focus on, which these exercises do a great job of that. Another criteria that was cherished and treasured in list time, and I believe needs to come back, was the idea that each and every pianist had a very specific tone which they achieved through their fingertips. It was known that Liszt's tone was so vast that he could reproduce different instrument sounds on the piano. He could make the piano sound like flutes, like cellos, like basses and violins, and he can also do textures and um, make the piano sound perhaps like a thunderstorm was coming or that there were birds chirping. You name it, Franz Liszt was able to achieve these effects that were astonishing and that brought the piano to another level of expression. And of course, the third criteria was that the tone had to be singing. For melodies, it had to carry, it had to be resonant, it had to be full, and so that also required a certain strength in the fingers. So the first exercises in Liszt's book really do do the trick. So let's turn to the very first ones and I'll show you the way that I approach them and the way that I teach it in the golden tone technique. Let's take a look. Exercise one starts with the independence of one finger while the others hold down silently. So for the first page of Liszt's exercises, he just will do the repetition of the C with the thumb while the other four fingers are held down. The way that I teach this in the Golden Tone course and which you can uh, get the 60 minute training for, which really does give a lustrous sound, it gets rid of tension in the arms and forearms and it also unlocks a beautiful singing tone, is that the fingertips are curved and there's this feeling of firmness in the fingertips. So even if you haven't played piano in, the, in a while, just this idea of curving the fingers is very powerful. It's called the reflex of flexing that we've had since we were babies. It's one of the initial reflexes that we had. And so to curve the fingers feels very natural. So when you place the fingers down and you press them silently down, it leaves room for the thumb to just play on its own. Here you could see this nice rounded bridge that develops and the thumb is also nicely rounded. The wrist is not too high or too low, but in level with the keys. And it's so important to get the bridge rounded because if it's flat and collapsed, you can't really do this exercise with any strength. So the bridge does act 
as an incredible support for the hand. Liszt goes through various different rhythms in these exercises. So um, we'll get a syncopated rhythm in the second one. And so on and so on until at the very end of the page, he goes through um, repetitions, but with an accent on a different note of the four sixteenth notes. So we'll get an accent on the first of every four. very potent exercises, but they don't sound altogether that exciting, but for good reason, because they are so targeted. When the other fingers are being held down, that produces a tremendous amount of resistance for the fingers. Because we have to keep the fingers from coming up and floating up, it makes it so powerful. And that way we can really get the independence of the fingers. To get back in shape, I will do the all the iterations of the single finger um, until you get to the fifth one, which is uh, now he changes the keys and he goes into B flat and now the fifth finger goes through that whole round. So once I've completed that, I skip forward to the one in thirds. And so that is number 22. It starts with F minor. And so again, now it gets harder because we have to hold down three fingers at a time and focus on just two. And after the thirds are done, I'll go until exercise number 25 and then I skip to 29 which has octaves and now the octaves go through the same exact process. Now in the octaves it's again very important to keep as much of a rounded bridge as possible. This is where the tone comes from and the control of your tone comes from having a good bridge. There are also a number of very important criteria such as a light arm and how to use the energy from the back which again is in the free 60 minute training. But for now, just if you'd like to get started with this approach, know that you have to make sure you have a nice rounded arch as you go through the octaves. So for the octaves, I go from exercise 29 to 32. And after that, I guarantee you, you'll feel so much more control in your fingertips. You'll be able to move on to other exercises such as scales or some churny. I recommend uh, churny opus 740 or whichever ones you happen to be practicing. These list exercises are so targeted. I recommend them for players of all stages, um, from beginner, if they can handle that kind of uh, focus on the independence. I f would highly recommend that for even beginners until obviously advanced pianists. Um, and it's a quick way to really bring back the fingertips and get them to feel alert and ready to go on again. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I would love to know what are your favorite go-to exercises. Write them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel where I upload new videos, tutorials every week, and be sure to check out that training to learn more about the approach to these exercises. Happy practicing and see you soon.